Hello again, and welcome to this webinar by the Science-Based Targets Initiative about science-based target setting for the building sector. My name is Kenza, um, and I'm the European Regional Lead at the SBTI, and I'll be your host for this webinar. We are very excited to have this webinar today as it launches the pilot buildings guidance that we have developed. The buildings project um, kicked off in October 2021, so we are taking this opportunity now to trial the guidance with companies um, and financial institutions who are interested in being the first in the industry to go through the, this uh, exciting process. Next slide, please. So before we start, a few guidelines. Um, this is a Zoom webinar and your camera and microphone are automatically muted. Um, participants can send question, questions via the Q&A button and we encourage you to send them throughout the webinar. We have a team that will be providing uh, written answers to the questions throughout the sessions and some of them may be answered to Q&A at the end of the session. The slides from the webinar will be shared after this call, and please note that um, this webinar is also recorded for the benefit of those that um, cannot attend the session. Next slide, please. So this is our agenda for today. We have uh, scheduled one hour in total, but we expect to get through the content um, in a bit less time than that, leaving time for um, questions. We will start with some opening remarks from our Chief Technical Officer, Alberto, followed by an introduction to the Science-Based Targets Initiative, then move on to provide um, an explanation of what science-based targets are, uh, including some important information about our collaboration with uh, CREM and Rumble to develop the building sector pathways. Then um, SBTI staff and our technical partners, CREM and Rumble, will present um, our project on buildings, what the guidance um, um, we have been developing covers exactly, and we will finish off with a Q&A session. Next slide, please. So to get a better sense of the audience today, let's do a quick poll so we know what kind of organization um, you represent. And uh, while the poll is running, I'm pleased to introduce the team working on today's webinar. Firstly, we have Carl Downey, um, who is the head of the sectoral development at SBTI and has oversight of all the sector projects. Uh, we also have Ayla Dinche, um, who is the building uh, buildings lead at SBTI and leads the work on buildings. And we also have uh, Julia Wein and um, Sven Bienert from Krem and Matteo Caspani from Ramble that will be speaking about the collaboration with the SBTI on this project. I will moderate the Q&A session and my colleagues, uh, um, uh, my colleague Paulina will do the same in the afternoon session. I also want to thank all uh, of those who are working behind the scenes on this project and on this webinar. So Amir Khan and Paulina Moreno, it is thanks to their work that this webinar is happening. Um, during the webinar, colleagues from SBTI, uh, PwC, uh, CREM, and REMBLE will also be supporting us um, to answer your questions in the chat. So with that, uh, we will close the first poll um, and let's take a look at who has joined us today. So many of you are joining from the industry. So we have a lot of um, companies, but also consulting um, firms. A few also financial institutions um, and representation from NGO, industry and association and academia. So without further ado, let's move to the content and we will start with some uh, opening remarks from our CTO, um, Alberto. Hello and welcome. My name is Alberto Carrillo. I'm co-founder and chief technical officer of the Science Based Targets Initiative. I'm really excited to share this message with you today when we are kicking off the pilot test of the draft buildings guidance. This guidance will enable companies and financial institutions to take their part in the transformation to a net zero economy, a transformation that is increasingly urgent. This year is being considered the warmest year on record. Heat waves are becoming more and more intense and fires and floods are becoming more and more devastating. 
This is already causing serious damage to human health, to livelihoods, and to economies around the world. Credible corporate climate action has never been more critical. Last year, we saw an 87% increase on the number of companies setting science-based targets. However, it is crucial to exponentially grow the number of companies taking action across regions and sectors if we want to secure a livable future for all. To meet the demand for the growing demand for science-based targets, SBTI has gone through an impressive transformation over the past few months. We have doubled our capacity. We have halved average waiting times for target validations. We continue to strengthen our organization by adding new expertise to our board, um, by making our services and operations more efficient, and by enhancing the robustness of our standard setting processes in line with established best practice. By pilot testing the building's guidance, companies and financial institutions have an opportunity to apply this framework to test its feasibility and to help us identify potential areas for amendments. The sector is pivotal in the decarbonization of the global economy, as it accounts for over one third of global emissions and is deeply impacted by the climate crisis. This is why the relevance of this sector is so important and the importance of this guidance. Before I hand over to the building's team for the presentation on the guidance and pilot testing, I want to congratulate them and thank them for the great effort to put this, this, this document together. I also want to acknowledge our partners that have been critical in this effort, including the CREM, the Carbon Real Estate Monitor Initiative, and also Rambo. Thank you very much for your collaboration. Now I'll hand over to our team to kick us off. Thank you. Great, I'm now going to hand over um, to Carl Downey, our head of sector development to give an introduction to the initiative and delve further into the background of the project. Carl, over to you. Great, thank you, Kenza. So good morning, good afternoon, everybody. I'm just gonna give a quick introduction to the Science-Based Targets Initiative. I'm gonna talk a little bit about what science-based targets are, and then I'm going to introduce this project on buildings. So for those of you who don't know us, the SBTI, we're a collaboration between the five organizations that you can see at the bottom of the screen here. And what we do, what our mission is, is to encourage companies to take ambitious climate action by setting climate targets that are aligned with the latest climate science. So we do this by developing the resources that companies need to understand how much they should be reducing their emissions for their individual case. And that's what we're presenting today for building sector companies. And we also offer an independent validation service of company targets. That's who SBTI is. Now I'm just gonna talk about what science-based targets are. So our net zero standard lays out the full framework for science-based targets. And it has it talks about the four elements that long-term net zero targets have that you can see on the screen here. So the first is the 1.5 degree aligned near-term target. So that's a target with a time frame of five to 10 years. The second element is the long-term target. So that's a target to reduce emissions to a residual level by 2050 or sooner. And that's an over 90% reduction compared to today, today's emissions or even more for some sectors. The third element on the screen is optional. So for us, science-based targets must be based on real emission reductions within the value chain. And this means they cannot rely on offsets or compensation, but that doesn't mean that such actions beyond the value chain don't have value to help reduce emissions in other parts of the economy. So companies may wish to embark on these as a voluntary additional action. And that's what we call beyond value chain mitigation. And then the fourth and final part on the screen is that when a company reaches its very low emissions by its long-term target date, it must further commit to reducing those residual emissions to reach net zero through permanent removals from the atmosphere. So that's the framework. But then the next question is, how should a company calculate how much it needs to reduce its emissions for its near-term targets for its individual case? So at the SBTI, we use two main target setting methods. The first one, which is shown on the left-hand side of the screen, it's used for the large homogenous sectors, such as is the case with the building sector discussed today. And here companies are expected to converge towards a sector decarbonization path 
which is expressed in terms of carbon intensity. So for buildings, that's kilos of CO2 per meter squared. We refer to this method sometimes as the sectoral decarbonization approach, the SDA. And I'm mentioning it now because it's the method that uses the in-use operational pathways and the embodied emission pathways that you'll hear about later in the webinar. And later, the other speakers will, will also explain how the carbon intensity pathways that are needed for this method were developed. The other method used by SPTI shown on the right is for used for all other sectors or all other emission sources, and it's called cross-sector absolute reduction. And it expects all companies to reduce emissions at the same linear annual rate. And I also mentioned it here because it is also referred to in the building's guidance for particular uses or particular emission sources. So now I'm going to briefly introduce the building's project, but before I do that, it falls to me to open our second poll of the webinar. And this poll asks the question, where is your organization based? So we can launch that poll now. And in the meantime, I will continue with my brief introduction of the buildings project. So first thing I want to say is that companies from the sector, of course, are already able to set targets using our tools and many have done so, but we launched this project to provide much more detailed guidance to the sector and also to upgrade the ambition to 1.5 degree targets. So today marks the launch of pilot testing of that guidance and tool. But firstly, why was it important for SPTI to offer specific guidance to this sector? Well, I think as everybody here knows, the building sector is a huge contributor to emissions worldwide, accounting for more than a third of global greenhouse gas emissions. It's also a sector that's growing faster than other sectors. And it's a complex sector in terms of its value chain and in terms of greenhouse gas accounting. So better guidance was needed to help companies to set targets. So with this project, we really set out with three main objectives to offer the 1.5 degree pathways for the in-use operational emissions of buildings, new 1.5 degree pathways for embodied emissions of buildings, which was never done before, and the target setting guidance and tool that brings all these together. We haven't been working on this alone, so I just want to briefly acknowledge the partners that we've had on this project that have been mentioned already. So CREM is the Carbon Risk Real Estate Monitor. They've been offering in-use operational pathways for buildings for a number of years, but this is the first time that SPTI and CREM are collaborating to offer one aligned set of pathways. Our second partner is Ramble, a consulting firm that had already done groundbreaking work on 1.5 degree pathways for embodied emissions for buildings in Europe specifically. So we brought them on board to develop pathways for the global sector. And then PwC and DSS Plus have been helping us to develop the guidance and the tool. And we also want to acknowledge the Loudness Foundation who have been funding this project. And then I have just one more slide as a way of introducing the organizational aspects of this project before colleagues go into the technical details, and that's to mention our expert advisory group. It's an important part of all of SBTI's resource development process to have such an expert advisory group to accompany the project. So the buildings group can be seen on the slide. Members were selected to provide a diverse balance of companies, NGOs, and academia, and coming from different geographies. And the role of the group is advisory, so the final sign off on deliverables is by the SPTI. So that means that the documents being presented today do not necessarily represent the views of the whole expert advisory group. And with that, I will hand back to our host, Kenza. Thank you, Carl. And thank you everyone for submitting the poll. Um, we will now close it and take a look at the results. So the majority of um, the audience today is located in uh, Europe, um, and we also have uh, quite some re representation in Asia. Great, so um, I would uh, now like to hand over to the next speaker, who is uh, Julia Wein from uh, CREM, uh, who, who will talk to us about the in-use uh, emissions pathways. Julia, uh, over to you. Yes, thank you very much and um, okay, so hello, my name is Julia Wein, I'm the operational lead of the um,
Crime Initiative, yeah, Crime yeah, Risk yeah, yeah, Real yeah, Estate yeah. Monitor, and I'll just provide a quick overview yeah, of yeah. Um, yeah how we calculated or how we derived to those pathways. Um, so let me quickly just share or dive right into the slides. So again, what is uh, CREM, uh, our pathways? They are directly in line with the Paris Agreement of achieving the 1.5 degree uh, target. And here we develop country specific and property type specific uh, benchmarks, trajectories in which you can then use for risk assessment uh, and see, okay, is my asset or entire portfolio aligned with the 1.5 uh, degree targets. Next slide, please. So um, a couple of uh, points uh, also to note uh, what the pathways, of course, here we're only looking at the operational carbon. I mean, until 2050, 80% of the building stock um, that we use in 2050 is already built today. So here, CREM only focuses on that in-use space, uh, optimizing that operational carbon. And uh, further, I would also mention, I'd like to mention here that CREM looks at the whole building approach. So we also include scope one, scope two, and scope three in terms of tenant electricity. Um, for example, the last point here to mention is also, of course, all the KPIs uh, are in square foot, uh, sorry, square meters, not in square foot. Um, if you are located in the US, you should convert this and then in kilowatt hours. So we also, in addition, to those carbon intensity pathways, we also have an energy intensity um, pathway. Um, what was our uh, story? So in 2018, uh, that was our project launch. We were first the uh, EU Horizon 2020 funded uh, project. After this, we got follow-up funding also from the Laudis um, Foundation. And now the new pathways, which we released, are fully um, aligned with the SBTI. And here we spent all of last year, um, the whole year we took to derive and calculate those uh, new pathways and version two, um, which again is fully aligned now with the SBTI, uh, we released in January. How were the pathways actually calculated? So we here we have uh, four main steps. So step number one is we looked at the global uh, budget, which we still have available until 2050. And here, of course, we used all of the uh, yeah, main sources. Uh, um, also here again, aligned with SPTI, we looked at IEA data, um, IPCC report, used that 500 gigaton budget, which we still have available. Um, until 2050, and then um, said, okay, or looked at the um, real estate share of that 500 gigaton, and then created one pathway for real estate, looking here at floor area, growth rates, um, again, whole building emissions, and we as Scrum then took it one step further uh, to derive those country and property type specific pathways. Again, we uh, use the SDA convergence approach um, to derive, uh, derive those pathways, which all converge uh, basically at net zero in 2050. But depending on what country you're in and in which property type, property type you are, um, the starting point will differ, differ as we always start with the country specific um, average. And here the important data that we look at is the specific energy mix. We look at um, the respective emission factors um, and also, of course, how does everything develop and, and change until 2050. Uh, with this, we then created that country and property type specific pathway. Um, and after that, our final step was then to create also the uh, energy intensity pathways, which we as CREM also offer in addition. Again, um, or basically uh, nearly last slide, uh, this also shows the data that went into the pathways and also our, um, the whole process. So first of course, first and most important step is here to align with all of our partners, align with SPTI and also all of our other data partners who feed us all the information. Uh, we, we then select the countries and property types. We now cover 44 countries and uh, all the most important property types. And then we go on to collect all of the data 
this isn't just desk research. This is really we get the data from all of our global um, partners and uh, initiatives. And the data here is just listed on the right. So you can see here again, whole building, um, the emission factors we need, uh, the energy mix, building stock and growth rates. How does everything change until 2050? We then proceed to do a internal quality assurance um, and check. Um, after this, we had a public consultation phase before we then published the pathways in January. Final slide, uh, just a quick uh, also image of our pathways here, just a couple of examples. Again, as I said, we have pathways for 44 countries. Uh, so that you see here uh, in the image that global pathway is right in the middle and all the other pathways take that shape of the global pathway, the blue one. And then depending what country you're in, maybe these start lower. For example, France has a very green uh, uh, green energy mix, so they start a bit lower, where, for example, other countries might start a little bit above. But using that SDA approach, they all then converge in 2050. Um, further, um, we also have more and more property types. For example, now we have uh, distribution warehouse cooled and warm. We have that new baseline year, so the starting year is now 2020. And uh, we as CREM, additionally, we also offer uh, all GHG pathways, so also including those E's, in case you do also um, track those refrigerant losses. So thank you, everyone. And also feel free to post any questions in the chat and happy to answer any further questions you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Julia, for this comprehensive presentation about uh, in-use emissions pathways. Um, I would now like to hand over to the next speaker, who is Matteo Caspani from Ramble, who will talk about the em embodied emissions pathways development. Matteo, over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Kenza, and good morning, good afternoon, everyone. So my name is Matteo Caspani, and I'm a senior consultant in uh, Rumble Management Consulting. Um, I was project manager from Rumble side of this project, and uh, together with, uh, uh, with our partners, we developed uh, pathways for embodied uh, emissions at the global level. So just a few words, um, embodied emissions, uh, here we are referring basically to all the upstream emissions from sourcing and producing construction materials, and also including emissions from transport and the construction side and demolition. So as you know, so far there has been quite a lot of uh, discussions and uh, work already related to uh, basically operational emissions, how to reduce those, while so far embodied emissions still uh, have not been considered as much. And uh, uh, the relative share of embodied emissions is actually growing and they represent a fairly large amount of emissions for uh, the global building sector. Um, just to give you an idea, at the European level, about 60 to 70 percent of about uh, of the embodied emissions uh, at the moment are stemming from the materials used uh, in the initial building constructions. And these are also referred to upfront embodied emissions. So as part of this initiative, uh, we developed a pathway at a global level. And just to give you an idea, uh, here we summarize some of the main characteristics of this uh, embodied emission pathway. First of all, this pathway is fully aligned with the uh, SBTI fundamentals and is a pathway related to new buildings, new constructions. As I mentioned, uh, we focused on upfront embodied emissions since we cover uh, most of the uh, embodied carbon part. And uh, the pathway that we developed is uh, uh, expressed uh, in terms of an uh, uh, intensity matrix expressed in kilograms of CO2 per uh, square meter. Um, as part of the analysis, we also uh, performed some additional sensitivities, and in particular, we also looked into uh, considering an absolute emission uh, target, as well as a combined pathway that covers not only uh, new construction, but also uh, renovation activities. Um, and in the figure here on this slide, you can see summarize the approach which uh, has been taken. First of all, we had to define uh, what is the, uh, basically the budget that can be allocated to the global uh, building uh, sector. And to do so, we used a top-down approach, uh, basically focused uh, with, with, the, with the help of a multi-regional input output model. And we applied a certain downscaling strategy, and I will go back to that in a, in a few minutes. And then we define future pathways for uh, 
the sector as a whole, and then we were able to uh, disaggregate the pathway into four main type of building categories that you can see here. So residential, office buildings, retail, and other type of buildings. Our approach is top down. However, uh, to define the, the starting point of these pathways, we also relied on bottom up LCA uh, data to be sure that we are uh, we are uh, using basically the latest available data in terms of uh, intensity of uh, new buildings uh, at the global level. And uh, this process led us basically to the development of this global decarbonization pathways for different building topologies expressed as I mentioned kilograms of CO2 per uh, square meter. Um, next slide, please. So in terms of key elements and data sources, um, first of all, um, the, the global carbon budget has been uh, defined uh, in alignment with the uh, IPCC uh, 6 assessment report. And in particular, we are considering the median of pathways for uh, achieving the 1.5 target degree with no or little overshoot or the so-called C1 uh, pathway. Um, in terms of data for the construction emissions, we relied on the uh, Axio base uh, database, uh, version 3.8.2. And as I mentioned, we relied on a global multi regional input output model, which is a model that provides information on the associated uh, environmental impacts of different economic sectors, including, of course, the, uh, the global construction sector and uh, the, the GHG emissions that are emitted as a result of these economic activities. And this uh, model covers different regions and sectors in the world. Um, as I mentioned, then, of course, we had to go through uh, defining basically a downscaling strategy uh, of, uh, of a carbon budget, um, which can be uh, done uh, following different type of principles. Um, Following a literature review, uh, we, we estimated that the, say the principles that are mostly used, uh, especially in the building sector, are grandfathering and economic value added. Uh, but as I mentioned, for the main case, for the main global pathway, we followed a grandfathering approach since this is the, the one that is mostly applied. However, we also perform sensitivities for uh, other different type of downscaling approaches. And uh, Based on the specific downscale approach, we are able to uh, allocate specific shares for uh, new building constructions, as you can see in this uh, uh, in this slide. Um, next slide, please. So, as I mentioned, we also relied on some bottom-up LCA data that uh, uh, helped us to basically uh, give it to have an idea of a status quo in terms of upfront embodied carbon levels for different uh, building types. Um, data referring to this uh, to this metric is uh, still uh, rather scarce, especially uh, for different regions across the world. Uh, however, we perform a little to review and uh, shortlist the, uh, the values which are uh, more relevant and more robust at the moment, as you can see summarized here. And we use in particular values for both the residential and for the uh, office sector. Um, then, in terms of, uh, uh, of the development of the pathway, of course, we had to think about how the uh, global floor area might change, might evolve into the future uh, across the different uh, different continents. And for doing so, we aligned with the uh, with the IA scenarios and with also the the, the CREMS projections. And in particular, we uh, also introduced a correction for innovation to account not only for uh, new building construction, but also take into account, of course, future renovation activity, as well as demolitions that will happen, of course. As I mentioned, uh, the global floor area was then disaggregated uh, into a different uh, building types so that we could produce um, an evolution of the global floor area for each of the four building types that we are uh, considering. Next slide, please. So what you can see here is uh, the main uh, embodied carbon pathway that was developed as part of this project. Um, so this, uh, uh, this pathway, as I mentioned, is divided into four main lines, which are uh, basically represented in the four main sectors that we are considering. It is a pathway that covers the entire period until uh, 2050. Uh, in the table, you can also see uh, a summary of uh, the corresponding values expressed in kilograms of CO2 equivalent per square meter. Um, so, as I mentioned, these pathways, first of all, refer to the upfront embryo carbon, which in terms of life cycle stages are referring to stages from A1 to the A5 for the entire building, including, of course, its structure, uh, floors, roof, uh, internal and external uh, walls. And as you can see, the pathways uh, basically depict a scenario in which by 2050, we will be able to achieve a 90% reduction relative to uh, 2020 absolute uh, greenhouse gas emission value. Um, and as you can see, uh, by 2050, yeah, these values will be uh, converging pretty much to uh, towards zero. Uh, next slide, please. 
Um, of course, when we think about a uh, reduction of onboard emissions, uh, this uh, can be achieved not only through, uh, let's say, the decarbonization of uh, key intensive materials, but also through other additional measures. So first of all, uh, as you know, uh, some of the key materials that are used in the building sector include cement and steel, and the SBTI has developed specific pathways for uh, these uh, production material sectors. Um, however, as I mentioned, uh, decarbonizing cement and steel is, also, is only part of the overall picture to reduce embryo emissions, and in particular, uh, reducing embryo emissions for new buildings also goes through, uh, for example, uh, improved design options to uh, use less materials, as well as uh, uh, increase the share of recycled or reused materials that can be used. And of course, progressively substituting uh, carbon intensive materials with uh, more low carbon options. Uh, but what you can see here in the chart on the right is basically the relative shares uh, in terms of you know how much basically cement and steel will contribute to the progressive reduction in embryo emission pathway. But of course, a significant share also needs to be achieved through uh, additional type of measures. Uh, next slide, please. Um, as I mentioned, we also performed uh, a few additional sensitivity analysis to see uh, to check how results would change uh, with uh, different assumptions. And in particular here, we are showing a comparison between the main scenario, which includes only buildings, and then a scenario uh, in which instead we have also uh, a correction for, uh, for innovation activities. Um, in general, as you can see, uh, the pathway for all building construction activities when also considering innovations are actually steeper in reduction uh, because, of course, of a, of a larger number of square meter uh, being included. Um, of course, you know, we project also a significant uh, increase in renovation activities in the future due to the need you know, for progressive energy efficiency improvements. Um, however, we need to take into account the fact that uh, on average, the upfront uh, emissions per square meter of renovation activities are lower compared to uh, new constructions, and in particular about 50% lower uh, compared to new construction. Um, um, what is important to, to highlight is that uh, the, the pathway for all building construction activities uh, actually allows and incentivizes the market to focus on renovation as a way to you know, progressively reduce their embryo uh, emissions. Uh, and at the same time, it allows for a pathway that uh, basically takes into account the growth uh, of the sector, the expected growth of the, of the sector into the future, um, so that the sector can achieve uh, decarbonization and be basically being aligned with the same uh, carbon budget. Uh, next slide, please. Also, uh, we performed an additional sensitivity analysis to check uh, how the results would change if we apply a uh, different type of downscaling principles. As I mentioned, the main scenario uh, has been followed using a, a grandfathering downscaling approach, but we also tested for an economic value added and equal per capita and uh, utilitarian approaches. However, as you can see uh, from the results here, uh, independently of the downscaling approach that, uh, uh, that is applied, uh, the, the overall embryo emission pathway do not change significantly. And in all cases, we have a steep reduction in terms of uh, kilograms of CO2 uh, per square meter, uh, mostly because of a projected uh, expected increase in square meter being built in the future, especially, of course, in, uh, in developing economies. And next slide, please. So thanks a lot. And uh, now we'll uh, give the floor back to Kenza. Happy to answer, of course, any questions you, you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Matteo, for delving into the embodied emissions pathways. Um, and before we move to the next section, we will now launch our third poll. So what is uh, the status of your company with respect to the SBTI? Do you have validated science-based targets already? Um, are you committed to setting science-based target? Are you considering a commitment? Let us know. And I'm going to uh, soon hand over to Ayla to talk about the key criteria and considerations we would like you to be informed about. But right before that, um, we'll close the poll and take uh, a look at the results. Great. Um, so I can see that a number of companies already have um, SBTs uh, approved by the SBTI. Um, about 25% also have committed uh, to setting science-based targets. And um, there is also a lot of interest in committing and joining the science-based targets. Great. Thank you very much uh, for participating. And uh, Ayla, the floor is yours. 
Thank you, Kenza. I will start with a few words about the position of science-based targets in the wide range, range of sustainability frameworks in the real estate and construction industries, as we are asked this quite often. First and the most important difference between SBTs and asset level frameworks is that SBTs are set for organizations and financial institutions. SBTs indicate how much and by when an individual company should reduce emissions from its operations and value chain to be aligned in line with the 1.5 C trajectory. SBTs cannot and are not intended to be used to assess the current performance of a company or an individual asset. We have identified gaps in current GHG accounting guidance that cause difficulties for the companies in the industry to set science-based targets. To help target setting, uh, this draft guidance first aims to help companies and financial institutions across buildings value chain by providing additional guidance on GHG accounting before explaining how targets should be set. The building sector value chain consists of a broad array of actors. Influence and responsibility of emissions from buildings are split between various actors, making stakeholder engagement crucial in succeeding in climate action. During the development process of the building sector guidance, we identified the key actors that benefit from and are therefore required to set targets using the new pathways and target setting methods. These intended user types that are described in more detail in the draft guidance are financial institutions investing directly or indirectly in real estate, developers, building owners, tenants with significant emissions from buildings, and property managers. To help identify whether buildings-related emissions are significant or not, we have introduced thresholds that can be found in the draft guidance. Other companies in the value chain are encouraged to set targets using the existing SBTI cross-sector methods. Next, I will go through some of the key criteria of the draft guidance and will also reflect on the changes since the public consultation. Already in the public consultation, we introduced the whole building approach to be used when accounting and setting targets for in-use operational emissions. This means that in-use emissions are expre expressed in kilograms uh, of CO2e per square meter for the whole building, irrespective of the emission scopes. For example, for a landlord, tenant's emissions from buildings must be included in the target boundary. In the draft guidance for public consultation, we proposed a mandatory use of location-based accounting approach for scope two to increase consistency in reporting and to avoid situations where companies may end up doing net zero claims using low impact market-based instruments that do not lead to actual real world emissions reductions. Based on the public consultation responses and throughout discussions internally and with the expert advisory group, we have decided to relax this requirement. In the new draft for pilot testing, we allow companies to use either location or market-based accounting for their scope to emissions in their target setting. However, companies are required to disclose their buildings related emissions also using the location-based accounting approach. Companies and financial institutions whose business model is reliant on a high turnover of assets are allowed to set fixed intensity targets aligned to sectoral decarbonization pathways. A fixed intensity target means that a company shall ensure that its portfolio emissions intensity is at or below the ambition level set by the pathway for each individual year within the target period. Another special consideration introduced in the draft is a maintenance target. Emissions intensities of some building, buildings portfolios may have already reached very low levels. Companies and financial institutions that already have their emissions intensities 
at the 2050 levels may set maintenance targets, which means that companies commit to maintain emissions intensities at the current level and only acquire zero ready buildings as defined by IEA. In the draft guidance for public consultation, we also introduced an additional mandatory commitment to commit to no new fossil fuel equipment. This commitment means that when the current existing fossil fuel installations reach the end of their lifetime, they would not be renewed, but instead substituted with technologies that do not demand fossil fuels on site. In the draft guidance for pilot testing, this commitment timeline is extended to be within five years from target submission or by 2030, whichever is sooner. Next, I will show target uh, example targets for two example companies. First, we have an example on in-use emissions targets. The case here is a REIT that owns and leases office space in Singapore, Philippines, and Malaysia. The aggregated reduction target for whole building emissions is 62.4%. And the target wording for REIT A uh, would be as shown on the screen. On the next slide, I will have a similar example on embodied emissions. With embodied emissions, the geographical location does not matter as the pathways are global. For embodied emissions, we are proposing two different target setting methods, sector-specific absolute contraction tar uh, target and sector-specific intensity target. Absolute contraction target means that reductions are measured in absolute terms, whereas the SDA-based intensity target is per developed square meter. Uh, in this example, company B is a developer that develops residential buildings. Its absolute contraction target would be 30.9%. Sector-specific intensity target, in turn, would be uh, 53.9%. And the target wording for company B is shown on the screen. Now that we have gone through the key content of the guidance and some ex target examples and target wordings, I would like to share what is going to happen next. So today, with these webinars, we are launching the pilot testing phase of the buildings project. Pilot testing means that companies and financial institutions are invited to participate and test target setting with the draft guidance. The objectives of the pilot testing phase are to inform the development of robust, clear and applicable guidance and criteria, and to identify possible challenges in implementing the building's guidance across regions and business models. The application period for pilot testing is starting today and lasts until the 10th of December. Uh, a few resources are available on the SBTI Buildings webpage to help companies to assess the materials, make a decision whether they would like to participate in pilot testing and to develop their targets. Materials available on the webpage are uh, the buildings, targets, uh, buildings guidance draft for pilot testing, a building target setting tool draft for pilot testing, and worked examples draft for pilot testing. A link to the survey that companies are asked to use when expressing their interest in participating in pilot testing will be available on the web page too. <clears throat> on this uh, relatively busy slide, you can see a summary of the pilot testing process. First, companies and financial institutions interested in pilot testing are asked to familiarize themselves with the draft resources and express their interest in pilot testing by filling the form that is provided on the building's webpage. We are asking companies to do this by the 10th of December to make sure that there is sufficient amount of time to develop and review targets. The SBTI then will select companies and financial institutions participating in pilot testing. 
I will share uh, the summary of the selection criteria after I've gone through the whole process on this slide. Selected pilot test companies and financial institutions are asked to develop their buildings related targets using the draft resources. To support companies in the development of the targets, the technical team will provide Q&A sessions to tackle any issues raised in the development process. Once the buildings related targets are ready, targets and all supporting evidence required in the draft guidance are submitted for a review at the latest on the 11th of February, 2024. The SBTI team will review the targets, but these targets will not be validated at this point. Learnings during the pilot testing phase will provide input in the development of the target validation criteria and also informs the SBTI of any possible needs to amend the guidance or criteria. You may wonder what is there for your company. Pilot test companies and financial institutions will receive feedback on their targets and documentation. Additionally, if desired, they are acknowledged in the final guidance and are provided with communications opportunities around the launch of the final guidance. On this slide, you have a short summary of the selection criteria for the pilot testing. We will have a total of 10 to 5 companies and financial institutions uh, in the pilot testing phase. We aim, I want to have all intended users of uh, described in the guidance represented at least once. In use uh, in, with in-use operational targets, we want to have a, as high coverage of regions as possible. And companies participating in pilot testing must be able to submit all required evidence in the given time frame. Thank you for your interest. I have reached the end of my section. I will hand over to Kenza to facil facilitate the Q&A. Great, thank you very much, Ayla, for sharing the specifics as well as um, more information on the pilot phase. This concludes the content presentation and uh, right before moving to our last section of the webinar, we would like to launch our final poll. So uh, what is the area you are most interested in uh, with regards to the building's um, science-based target setting guidance? Um, and while we let the answers come in, I will introduce the final section of our webinar. We will now have our speakers uh, join us for a Q&A. Thank you um, for those of you that have been submitting your questions uh, throughout the session. We um, encourage you to continue to ask them in the chat. We will get to uh, as many uh, of them as possible and we'll answer some of them live um, now. So let's close the poll and let's see what the results are. <clears throat> so the majority of the people want to understand how uh, science-based target setting works. Um, and also uh, a good number wants to learn uh, what the process entails and how um, the SBTI will encourage the target setting. Great, so let's move on to the Q&A and I invite all our speakers to join me now. Um, great, and we'll kick it off with uh, the first questions that have come through. So the first one, uh, maybe Ayla can answer this one. When will the final guidance be published? Thank you for the question. Uh, we want to publish the final guidance right after the pilot testing phase, so in 2024. Uh, however, the exact launch date depends on the outcomes of the pilot testing, so it's um, difficult to say at this moment. Great, thanks uh, very much. Um, a second question I have here is, why does the building sector have dedicated pathways, whereas other sectors do not? A uh, question for Carl. Yeah, um, the simple answer to this is that the building sector 
can and needs to decarbonize more quickly than other sectors. So in SPTI, we have our cross-sector pathway that can be used for many types of activities, but then we have certain uh, sectors which have uh, an intensity pathway that is less steep than the cross-sector pathway that they can use if they wish. And then for some sectors, such as the case of buildings, we have an even steeper pathway than the cross-sector pathway, which then becomes mandatory. So basically, uh, the operational emissions from buildings need to decarbonize much quicker and can decarbonize much quicker than the cross-sector pathway. That's why we, we have this. Great. Thank you, Carl. Um, maybe a question for uh, Julia now. Do you have plans to expand the CREM SBTI pathways to cover more countries and or building uh, types in the future? Mm -hmm. That's a good question regarding our strategy here. We differentiate into regions and sectors. And actually uh, talking about the regions, we are currently um, doing a project with um, UNI Greenprint and Berkeley Lab uh, in the US to establish further um, regional pathways um, or also due to just the wide geography of the country. And here also we plan this for, for other countries regarding the uh, property types. Of course, our pathways always start with the average. And now looking at a hotel, for example, or logistics, uh, even that sector uh, has a very wide range. So hotel building, if you have a spa um, and pool and so on, if you compare that directly with a bed and breakfast or a hostel, of course, it's it's very different here. We're not going to make new pathways, but we're going to publish some sector guidances of how to best normalize uh, the data before entering and benchmarking the pathways. Great. Thank you, Julia. Um, another question that has come through is uh, what building parts are included in the embodied emissions pathways? So this is a question for Matteo. Thanks a lot for the question. Um, so the scope of emissions that we are considering in the uh, embodied emission carbon pathway is, as I mentioned, upfront embodied emissions. So basically all the activities which are classified as construction in the building process. Um, so therefore, as an example, we have the building structure of the envelope, uh, the internal finishes, as well as all the type of inter, uh, technical installations that are part of the, uh, of the scope of the new building. Thank you, Matteo. Um, Ayla, I think this uh, question can go to you. Why are construction companies excluded from the guidance scope? Thank you for the question. There are two main reasons for not addressing construction companies uh, in this new draft. Uh, first is that embodied emissions pathways require reporting emissions at the practical completion, completion of the building rather than annual emissions from construction activities that may take place over multiple years. And the second is that construction activities uh, frequently involve the collaboration of several companies, contractors, subcontractors, which are each responsible for separate features uh, of the final building. It can therefore be a bit uh, impractical for construction companies to determine the share of their scope uh, one, two, and three emissions that can be attributed to the floor area of a newly constructed building, which is then necessary uh, when using their pathways. However, when a construction company is the main contractor, uh, they may be able to use the intensity-based SDA method. And in that case, uh, construction companies can follow the same target setting guidance as developers. Great. Um, thanks, Ayla. Um, maybe a question for uh, Carl. How does this guidance affect materials producers, for example, cement uh, or steel producers? So in fact, the guidance doesn't affect them directly. The guidance is not really aimed at them. Those steel or cement companies can use our other guidances. So we have guidance for cement and we have guidance for steel, which have specific pathways. They can use them for their own production. And then for users of the builder's guidance, where they're setting their embodied emission pathways, embodied emission targets, I should say, they can use the 
embodied emission pathways developed by Ramblin presents today. But if they are large buyers of cement or of steel directly, they could also use the cement or the steel pathways to set specific targets if they wish to. Great, thank you very much, Carl. Um, another question is, uh, how can we set targets for buildings that are not covered with the CREM pathway due to um, typology or location? Um, maybe uh, Ayla, you wanna take this one? Yes, of course. Um, so we have introduced an other pathway in the building's uh, target setting tool draft for pilot testing. Uh, that can be used where when there is no country and or asset type level pathway available. This was not uh, present in the draft for public consultation, but now in the updated draft, we have it. Great. Thank you very much. Um, an interesting question that uh, also came in is how should FIs uh, or financial institutions use this guidance? Um, Carl, would you like to respond to that? Yeah, so SPTI already has a guidance specifically for FIs, and this really talks about how they should set targets for their scope three category 15 investments. And it talks about how they can use our sector specific methods or pathways to cover um, portfolio companies with those emissions. So for example, if they had a steel company in their portfolio, they could use it. The, uh, the steel pathways. So for buildings, it's similar. Uh, if they have significant buildings emissions, they will use the buildings pathways. But here in the buildings guidance, because of course this is so important to many FIs, we go into a lot more detail about the obligations and the advice given to FIs to cover these emissions. Great, thank you. Um, and maybe one a last question for uh, Ayla here. Uh, we are not allowed to collect tenants' consumption due to legal restrictions. How can we apply the whole building approach? When it is not possible to get actual data, companies are advised to estimate the tenant consumption and then disclose the method used for these estimations. Great, um, thanks very much. Uh, Ayla, and thank you very much to all our speakers for helping answer the many questions that we've received uh, during this session. We are almost at the hour, so um, we'll be moving to our closing remarks for this session. So next slide, please. Thank you very much um, again to all our speakers and the audience with us here today. And before uh, we wrap up, uh, I would like to invite you to express your interest in piloting the draft guidance. The uh, guidance and other materials can be found on the SBTI Buildings webpage. Um, and as a reminder, the slides and recording of this webinar will be available on the SBTI Buildings um, webpage. If you have any questions and want to have more details about the pilot testing, please reach out to uh, us at buildings at sciencebasedtargets.org. Um, next slide, please. And yes, this just to say, uh, please get in touch with us if you have any further questions on this. And thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to receiving your expressions of interest for piloting the SBTI Buildings Guidance. Thank you.